Well, good morning, church family. Oh, wow, you actually got a response this morning. Online, I got a response in the worship center on a good morning. So online, good morning to you as well. My name is Jason, and I'm the lead pastor here at the church, and I'm going to give us a couple announcements. I'm so excited to worship the Lord with you, and I know that we have many of our friends and family members who are also tuning online. It's good to have you as well. So let me give you a couple of our announcements as we move the service forward. Um, By the way, I want to make sure you know, I'm sure you grab these when you come in. These are our bulletins that we work on weekly for you. Not me, but our team does, obviously. But um, we put this together for you to be up to date on everything. And so you can actually go through and look at all the different stuff that we are um, doing as a church and all different times and stuff. So make sure you look at that. But um, I want to encourage you, if you are newer here, and I was just talking to some newer friends of ours um, that just moved to Riverside, and um, if you're newer to us and you haven't filled out one of these cards, this is our welcome card here at Church on the Hill. And if you're here live in our worship center, we'd love for you to fill this out and give us a little bit of information about yourself. Uh, If you just moved to town, of course, we're going to need your your information so we can communicate with you. Or if you've had a change of address, um, I know that uh, I sent some something out this last week to someone it came back and I was like oh what happened they moved and didn't tell us and maybe that was on purpose I don't know I don't know maybe it was but um, please if you've moved we want to communicate with you we want to talk with you make sure you put your information down on there and then also at the bottom you can put prayer requests down Um, we love praying for you as a staff as your pastor I love praying for you so if there's something on your heart and a concern that you want us to be praying over make sure that you fill this out and put your little prayer request on there. And if you're live here in our worship center, you can drop this off at our welcome desk and you can just set it down there. We'll pick it up and then we'll be able to get all the information you've left for us or communicate with you if need be. Online, we haven't forgotten about you. You can go onto our website and you can go into the I'm a new tab and there's also a little digital card you can fill out and do all the same stuff. You can write a prayer request and we're getting a bunch of those by the way. This past week I think I had two or three um, came to my desk that one of you online filled out and sent to us. So I love that we have that ability to have online and so you can connect with us and be a part of what we're doing here at Church on the Hill. So make sure you fill that out and drop it off at the worship, I mean at the welcome desk if you're in the worship center and online again you can do that um, digitally. Next thing I want to just share with you, um, just so you remember, next Saturday at 12 noon, we're going to do our back-to-school splash. And so we're doing a big thing for the kiddos from ages 1 all the way up till our teenagers. We're going to have a couple different splash pads. We're going to do some snow cones. I know that uh, Tony Silva and I, I don't know, I think we did like 100 snow cones last year. It was so much fun. I love making snow cones. I know there's something about making those I just love. Um, But basically, we are doing this for our preschool families and also any families that you know that have young kids or also teenagers. So we're going to have all these different slides, uh, water slides for the kids to go down. We're also going to have a huge shark. This is amazing. Pastor PJ got this last year. We put this huge shark at what they call our North 40. That's that park that we own down over here. And the kids would run and dive in to the mouth of the shark. And I was sitting there as pastor watching this last year going, wait a minute, what goes in must come Yes, out church, yes, out. And so it's really amazing to watch our kids go in through the mouth and then out the backside. Yes, but it's so much fun. So we're encouraging you as a church family, please come out. And if you'd like to volunteer, of course, reach out to Pastor Karen here at the church and communicate with her on how you might want to volunteer. And then again, meet some of these precious families. Um, This last week, we got to um, welcome a bunch of our new preschool families at our school, and it was so much fun um, just greeting them and talking to them and hearing their stories and their kids' stories, and it was so much fun. And I even had this little girl, I didn't even know who she was, Um, we were giving out balloons to them. Martha, this was so much fun. And she comes running up, and she just grabs my leg and is like hugging it. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I'm looking at mom, is this good? Okay, all right. And um, she's like, oh my gosh, she's like, like, something about you. And I'm like, ooh. Yes, there's something about us as believers, 
And so I'm hoping we'll get a chance to minister to that precious family. And if that mom's here, um, that was your daughter. She was precious. She was precious. Anyways, so want to make sure again, um, this Saturday starting at noon, we'll have that. And it's going to be an absolute blast. All right, next thing um, I want to let you know, and I don't know if some of you parents who dropped off your kids saw, uh, we are in a major like rebuild um, for our early development for our children. Um, we had last year a wonderful, wonderful person donate some money for us to start fine-tuning some stuff for our children, which is another God thing. Um, Pastor Karen and I started talking about preparing for the younger generation that's going to show up with their little kids. And so we started dreaming about what we're going to do for the offices and, and um, opening them up and making sure that we're, we're having space for these families. And so we started dreaming and thinking through these things. So I'm hoping... Within this next week, some of those who are here live maybe can go over and see what we're doing. It's amazing. We're knocking down walls. We're putting in doors. We're refreshing with paint. And it's going to be an amazing, amazing um, spot for our children and future generations to come to church and learn about Jesus. And so I just want to say thank you for that and thank you for your patience. So um, as, of we speak, as we speak right now, uh, we got painters in there painting. Um, they're coming in and they're donating their time to help us with that. And I just love that. So, and again, another generous donor um, also is helping pay for some more of that. So we've had someone pay for it and then someone else pay for it, pay for it. And so God's just doing a thing here at Church on the Hill. And so um, that could be praised, by the way. We, that's so awesome. So we're going to need more volunteers. If, with, if there's any indication of what God's doing and preparing the way, Pastor Mary, we're going to need our church to step up and be a part of it. And so, again, I think there's going to have to be some Sundays where I let someone else preach so I can jump into twos and threes. Okay, maybe not. That's not my, 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 my gift and set. But if I had to, I would. But God's doing a thing, and you should be so proud of your church. Um, with that being said, make sure you keep checking into your bulletins and the calendar and what's going on with us here as a church. And I just want to lead us now into a time of just praising God um, with our finances. Um, I want to encourage you. I don't know if you noticed this or not. But when we do these little bulletins here, we like to keep you abreast of where we are at as a church. If you flip to the back side, you'll see that we have a little thing that says a budget update. We approved a, a budget this year uh, to move forward and to reach people for the Lord. And if you notice, we're a little bit behind schedule uh, for this year's giving. And that's okay. That happens during the summer. But I want you to be aware and know that as you watch over this, be praying about our finances at the church. Be praying about the future of, of what we're building. Be praying about some of you and others that aren't here yet volunteering and serving God. And so, again, we are a church on the move, and it's because of you it's because of me. It's because of us giving back to God's work through our tithes and offerings to him. So with that being said, you can give in a couple different ways. Um, online, you can, go, of course, go on our website and type in, and there's a little place that you can give, and that's one of the ways we do it. We also have an app. That's how Tammy and I, again, Tammy usually does and gives that way. But here at the Worship Center, if you want to write a check, we have a little giving envelope that you can uh, fill out your check, put it in the envelope, and then right back by the double doors, back by Josh, we actually have um, a little offering box you can set that in. But thank you again for, for being so faithful. Um, this is a faithful, faithful church, and I love you. Um, if I told you that lately, I love being the pastor of this church. I really do. I really do. Online, I love you guys very, very much. So let's pray as we dive into another form of our worship. We're going to use our mouths and praise him. So would you please pray with me as we begin this morning? God, we thank you so much, Lord, for who you are. God, as I told the worship team, and I feel like I need to tell the whole church family that, God, you rebuked me this week. You put me in check this week. And God, as I worry and concern about the church and the future of the church and how we've got to take ground for you, Lord. We want to reach more people for you. We want to be a part of strengthening marriages in you. God, we want to be a church that's walking some of our friends and family members from this life into the next the way you would want us to. God, we want to be a church that is there for, some, for people who are in the hardest of times right now. we got a lot of people, a lot of dear friends of mine, Lord, going through a struggle right now, physically, 
mentally, emotionally, and some with their marriages, God. And God, as I worry about all that stuff, as I know as people walk in this room or as they tune in online, God, I know we have so many burdens. But God, you rebuked me this week. And you reminded me, Pastor, Church on the Hill is not your church, it's mine. And I just want to let all the believers that are tuning in online and also all of us in the worship center to understand and know that if we are Christ followers, we put our faith and trust in you, we were purchased at a price, we're not our own, we're yours. And so God, all the worries, all concerns, Lord, would you just let them melt away right now? God, that our focus could be on you and you alone, that you would remind us through your Spirit's power and you guys speaking to us, Lord, that we'd understand that we're to live these lives open-handed, open-handed with our finances, open-handed as we serve you, open-handed as we love this world, open-handed through all the things that come our way, God, that we would understand that open hands can give and they also can receive. So God, now with our mouths, we're going to open them up, Lord. We're going to sing to you because you're that good. You're so precious. You're so wonderful. We're going to open them up, Lord. And as we do, Lord, as a sign of us opening up wide open to you, that your spirit would just fill us, Lord. You would fill us, God. So Lord, again, we love you so much. And thank you for this precious church. And your, your plans you have for it are mighty and great. I know it. And so, God, I'm going to get out of the way. We're going to get out of the way now, and we're just going to come to your altar, and we're going to worship you this morning because you're worthy of our praise. And we pray this now in the one name, the only name, the name above all names, right, church? The name above all names. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, are you ready to worship him? Church, are you ready to worship him? Because I am. Let's go. Let's do this. Well, good morning, church family. We're so happy to see you here this morning. Let's go ahead and get on our feet and worship. run for cover but the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven amen I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power and still the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water, who'll sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. We believe that our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life, because grace we I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. We're going to sing this part out as our prayer this morning. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Whoa. Amen. Greater things are still to come.
This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. My Jesus Christ, the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony.
mercy never fails me All my days have been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful God, all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father and I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God cause all my running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running team you did it again thank you for leading us into God's throne room and singing to him and um, in regards to uh, our worship team uh, there's definitely going to be some some changes that are going to be coming up here real soon um, our beautiful sister Kate who just sings like an angel yes as she walks out she hates when I compliment her um, her school schedule has changed up a little bit and so she's not going to be able to be here as much as she would like and um, also her husband Lucas who plays the keyboards for us um, as well um, they've been sensing that God has something next for them 
And as uh, soon as I got here, they were gracious enough to say, hey, uh, Pastor, we're here for, for a season, and we know that. We know that you're going to be taking the church in a new direction, but we're here to support you and, and bring worship to God as long as we possibly can. And God's put something on their heart years ago, a project and some things they want to go after. And so Lucas came to me a few weeks back and said, hey, I think our, our time here at the hill is coming to an end. And, and by the way, they, they are our family, and man, they love us, and we love them, and we're so thankful for just the time that they've spent. So this is Kate's last Sunday singing for us, or with us, um, and then when, of course, she has time off, she'll be in, in, in here, and maybe we can even sneak her up on stage from time to time. But then Lucas will also be stepping down um, mid-September as well. And so we are going, we're putting a team together, and there's gonna be a handful of you we're gonna reach out and say, hey, we need some of your talent. Uh, we need to get some of your talent up here on stage. And so I'm going to be sharing with you our leadership and what we're thinking about doing here moving forward in the weeks to come. But uh, to just know that, uh, man, we're so thankful for both of you. And uh, when I was candidating here at the church, um, you know, I was watching online during 2020 when all churches were shut down. And uh, these two put together some awesome worship sets. And was that in your living room or in your studio? It was probably in your studio, yeah. And um, it was fun to watch that and how they led the church through that in that time. Um, and you guys remember what a blessing that is. So we love you both. And I know you won't be strangers, and we'll see you from time to time. But thank you so much. And so, church, could we, and online, could you, we just thank you. We love you so, so much. I think I've said this to Lucas like 20 times. I think he's getting tired of hearing me say it, but he, he's what we call a true brother. Um, there are some people who say they're Christ followers and they'll call you brother or sister. And I know some of you call me your brother. Um, don't call me your sister. That's not me. But, um, but I'll call you sister or mom and, or dad in the faith, right? And he is a true, true brother. And what that means is that he, he bleeds the gospel um, they love the Lord and want to see his church move forward. And so, again, I, I just so thankful for that. So, again, we'll, we'll be um, informing you on some changes and things coming up. So, But um, that last song that you picked, oh. has 2022 just been a year for some of us? Amen. Right, sis? I mean, this has been one of those years, I, I can honestly say as your pastor, it's been one of the best years of my life. I'm so thankful to God, and I can sing that song with tears. Look, I'm tearing up now. Um, the older I get, the more of a just a wham wham I am becoming. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. You know, some of you men are like, toughen up. I used to be tougher. I'm just not anymore. And I'm fine with that. God's doing something new in me. But uh, singing that song... It's been an incredibly great year, and it's been an incredibly hard year. Um, that song, and I know my mother-in-law is watching online, Mom, I Love You. Every time I hear that song, I think of my father-in-law who passed this year. And many of you prayed him through a horrible, a horrible, horrible time as he passed from this life into the next. And, and he, he struggled with his breathing. And I can remember hearing Dad, right, Tammy, all the time would say, all my life, God has been so faithful. And I remember even when he had his condition, I, many, I know some of you online are watching from hospital rooms. And you're sitting there questioning, going, okay, why, God's taking me through this, but watching that hard time that dad went through, and he had a scar into the lungs, so his breath got less and less and less. And so he would say, all my life, God's been faithful, and I, I gotta be praising him, right, Pat and Rich? Even through like the hardest times, I'm gonna praise him. And whenever I hear this song, I, I think of dad. And he would struggle with his breath, and he felt, Ed, he felt that as long as God got him here, or had him here, and he was still breathing and able to speak, that he was going to honor God with that by loving on us as his family, on his grandchildren. And he's even witnessing to people who were questioning the Christian faith in his hospital bedroom. I mean, he's, you know, some people are like, well, you know, I don't believe in what you believe, and I believe in this. And dad's like, well, I understand, I honor that, but you might want to look into this. And he would give him like little tidbits of things. But all my life you've been faithful, God. You've been so, so good, and so through the thick and through the thin and through challenges and struggles and changes and the good, the bad, and the ugh, he's been faithful. And we can sing to the praises of him. He's so good. Before we get into the word, would you just pray with me one more time? Let's pray and just honor him. 
God, one of the things I love about this church, and I know there's many great churches throughout the Riverside, the Inland Empire, Southern California. Oh, my goodness, Southern California. We have some of the best churches in all the United States in Southern California. But, God, there's something about this place. This little church up on the hill. God, where where a pastor can come in here and just be totally raw and honest. And God, I hope that everyone who walks in these church doors or tunes in online understands this is a safe place just to be us. And and, and through the good, the bad, and the ugly, the hard times and the good times, Lord, that we would remember that you're with us and that we have other people who are struggling too. So God, wherever we're at, if we're in that season where we're just praising you in 2022, Lord, I praise you so much this year. You've been so good to me and my family. And God, on the other end, it's been a hard, hard year. So wherever we're at in that season, like right now, Lord, I pray that your spirit would touch the hearts and minds of the, your, your followers, God. And, and God, I'm also going to ask this too, Lord, as we continue the series on The Voice. Because there's times where, as believers, we don't hear you speak in the way we used to. And God, some of us that don't know you yet question, like, wait, can I hear from God? And God, I pray that you would speak to all hearts and all minds, and that, God, that we would understand that you want us all to come to the saving grace of knowing you, is where we'll jump into this, this, this sermon this morning. So God, thank you. All, all my life, all our life, right, church? We can say this with an amen. All our life you've been faithful. Is that an amen, church? Amen. Thank you, God. So speak to us now, Lord, as we worship you through the thick and the thin, and we lay our lives before you in worship. Open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what you would have to say to us. And even our friends that are what we call truth seekers are looking into seeing, is this God thing real? And is this what I'm missing in my life? I pray you'd speak to those as well, Lord. We lay this at your feet and ask that you bless it. In your name we pray this, Jesus. Amen. Oh, I already said this before. If you came in late, I love this church and I love you. I love being a, I I love this place. Well, this place means us. (laughs) I love you. And um, I know that, uh, did someone just go, aw? I think someone said, did someone someone do that? Anyone? Okay. Maybe I'm hearing things. Um. Today we're continuing this three-week sermon series called The Voice, and this week we're going to talk about where is the voice of God? Where is it? And there's times that we hear it clearly, there's other times we don't. And um, I just want to let you know as your pastor, I believe that every human being, at some point in their life, the Holy Spirit speaks to them either through nature or or what have you. Um, I was talking about my father-in-law who's graduating and is in heaven now. I remember him taking me down to Biola, Ed, to hear um, a a creationist debate with an an atheist about um, the planet and if there's a God and all this other stuff. And and it was a a great uh, conversation. And it was a debate, Ryan, that it's one of those that was God-honoring. I mean, both the men just honored each other and just had dialogue. and, And both sides had people clapping for their points, which which was really healthy. I was like, wow, okay, this is, this is healthy. It wasn't, you think it is at a Christian college, it'd be like all like Christian thought, but there were some other people clapping at non-Christian thoughts. And I remember this atheist, this staunch atheist talking about, man, there is something about you Christians that I, I wish I had. And I'm like, ah, oh, like you're missing it, right? It's, it's right there in front of you. And he says, when I feel most alive is when I'm out in the ocean surfing, and I'll be sitting there, and it's kind of calm, and I'm waiting for the next wave set to come in. And I see a couple dolphins swim by. Just something inside me leaps. And Jason, I'm thinking, God's speaking to you through his creation. This is why you feel so alive. They're, they're, you're missing the point. Right, dog? They're missing it. And so I believe at some point God speaks to, to everyone. And so I'll, um, we didn't put this actually in your bulletin. I just put it on the slide so online you can uh, join us as well. I want to show you a couple of verses in regards to God's heart and everyone coming to the saving grace of knowing him. Let's look at 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. And it will be up on the screens for you. It says this. He says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions and prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be made for Who? All people, all people. Um, can I get real studious with you real quick? This Greek word all, you know what it means? 
all, right? Right? You're like, oh my gosh, pastor, you just blew us away. Man, your knowledge of scripture just, woo, right? I mean, that was, that was profound. Goodness gracious. Man, who are we to sit in the presence of such a mighty man, a God who knows? It's simple. The Bible's simple. Praise God, because I'm a simple man. Can I hear an amen? Okay, all right. Come on. You guys know me. It's okay. You can pick on your pastor. And so he says this, to be made for all people. Look at, look at next. He says for this. For kings and, there's that word again, all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. Now watch what it says here. This is good and pleases, and this is why I wanted us to read this whole section. It says, this is good and pleases God our Savior, verse 4, who wants, there's that word again, all people Church, to be what? Can you read it with me? To what? Be saved and to what? To come and to a knowledge of what? Of the truth. The truth of God. What we've been singing about. That he comes into people's lives, right, Don? And he transforms them from the inside out. He transforms us. The person I used to be is not the guy you see before you today. And if he can do that for me, oh, goodness gracious, he can do it for you. That's another great place. I guess I'm going to do this all more until just you get into it. That's a good place for an amen. Goodness, you know this sinner. Gosh. Right? Hey, don't get all snarky. I know you, you too, sinner. Okay? Just so you know. But what is it about that some people listen to when he speaks and others, they, they don't? I want to show you this great scripture, Beck, and I know you've read this many times and probably taught this in, in, um, over the years. But this is very interesting. In John uh, 10, 1 through 2, this can be on your slides as well. Jesus is talking about being the good shepherd. And there's something I want to point out through this verse and a couple other verses that, that you'll see where I'm kind of heading with this. Because it seems like I'm being scattered, but I'm not. I'm, I'm focusing in on something, so you've got to track with me. So it says there, John 10, 1 through 2. It says, very truly I tell you Pharisees. So he's talking to the, the people who think they know it all. They think they've got it all figured out. He says this, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. What he's pointing out is this. He's saying, hey, I want you guys to understand by this illustration that if there is a shepherd who has all these sheep, if someone's trying to get in from the outside, doesn't have the key to the gate, hasn't go through the open door, they're trying to sneak in, this is someone else. This is, this is not God. Okay? He's pointing out that that's not the shepherd, and he's pointing out there's someone else who's going to try to sneak in at this point. Um, I have to share this with you. I've told you that I've grown up in some really harsh, harsh places. Like, you think Anaheim's tough. Like, I come from San Bernardino, and it, it's, it, man, there's parts of San Bernardino, oof, it, it's, it's tough. It's real tough. And uh, um, I lived in Rialto, California, uh, part of my life as well. And so my dad was renting this little place in not such a great neighborhood. And so he, um, uh, we went out. Uh, my older brother took me as a teenager. I think I might have been in like eighth grade. He took me to SeaWorld. And so my older brother's 10 years older than me. And so he took me down there. And we got back late to the house. And he dropped me off and then went to his apartment. And so I got to the front door and I realized, is that you ever done this? And by the way, this is comical. Um, I didn't have my keys to get in the front door. It's kind of comical that today I came to church without my keys and Pastor Karen had to let me into my office. Kind of funny. So have you ever done that? Like you forgot, you, for, you forgot your keys. Well, if it's your home, you know how to get in other ways. But it's late. Like really late. And so, anyways, I, I go, and I go to the back of the house, and we had this old rickety, we were renting this horrible, horrible little place, and it had this huge um, glass sliding glass door that the lock was broken, but if you're from the hood, you know how to lock things up without needing a lock. What do you usually do? And most places do this, but you get like a, a little like dowel, like a rod, and you put it in there so you can't quite open it. Well, this thing wasn't quite cut long enough, so you could inch it open just enough just enough. And I could get, and I used to be a lot skinnier back then and I was, as a kid, but I had long arms. And so I was able to get my arm through and then around, and then I could kind of tickle it up. And so I had like this little branch. And so I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm like trying to flick it up. 
and if I flick it up and get it out, then I could get in. And it's happened. Like I'd get home from school and no one would be home and I'd know, oh, I forgot my keys again. I could get in that way. So this is something I was used to breaking into my own home and maybe other places. But anyways, that's another story another time. So Jessica's like, Pastor Jason, you shouldn't be telling everyone your sins. I know, Jess, but it is who I am. So anyhow, I, I take it and I'm trying to flick it up. And again, this is like one o'clock in the morning. My dad is sleeping not too far from, from this room. And out of nowhere, and PJ knows where I'm going with this, out of nowhere as I'm trying to flick this, and all my arms in through the curtain, I'm trying to flick it, all of a sudden I get this. Right into my head, cold steel in my head. My dad pulls back the covers. He's got his 38 Magnum right at my forehead. I mean, he puts an indent in my head. And I can remember, he goes, dink. And I'm like, ah. Oh. He pulls back the curtains. Like, and you can sure heard my dad. My dad was a very calm man. He was very calm, very unlike his son. He's like, ah. Oh. And he pulls the gun back. He goes, Jay, what, what are you doing? I go, I forgot my key. And he's like, son, I could, I could have killed you. I'm like, I know. <laughs> you know, type deal, right? This verse here is saying this. So let's go back and let's look at John 10, 1 through 2. So Jesus is trying to point out to these Pharisees this thing, that there's someone who climbs in in another way. They shouldn't be coming in that way, and that's why my dad, my dad put his gun to my head. I shouldn't have been coming in that way. I shouldn't have had my king gone through the door. And so he points out that there's a thief and a robber who comes that way, but look at verse 2. It says, the one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. This is his flock. And it says this, this in uh, John 10, 3. It goes on and says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep, look at this, listen to his, what? Voice. They listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I love that about this verse, that he calls them, he knows them by name. By the way, Jesus knows you by name. One scripture says that he knows every hair that is on your head. And for some of us that are follically challenged, he's counting down the days where it has just fallen out. He knows. He's like, oh my gosh, could you please slow down, <laughs> right? But they listen to him because why? They are his sheep. We go down into John uh, 10, 4 through 5, and it says this. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep do this, watch this, follow him because why? They know his what, church? His, his voice. They know it. And if you've never heard God speak to you the first time he does, it is scary. It is weird. When I first started going to church and they would talk about the Father, Son, and you remember this, Caleb? I, don't, I think you were the Holy Ghost, that one illustration I did. They'd say the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand why churches would use the word Holy Ghost. But if you've ever had God talk to you for the first time, it, man, it, woman, it's, it feels like a little bit of a haunting. It's scary because you've never had something speak to you in that way. And so he's talking here and he's showing that, look, they follow him because they know his, his, his voice. And it goes on in verse 5. It says, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away. And you've ever seen a dog do that? You, you'll, you'll see like an, an owner of a dog who's trained well. You know, here boy, here girl. And they'll call him and they'll come right to him. But if you go, they like look at you like, I don't know you. Right? They just, I don't, I don't know you. So they'll run to him. But if you see there in verse 5, it says, in fact, they will run away from him because they do not, what, recognize the stranger's voice. They don't understand it. So there are some people, especially as Christ followers, we hear God's voice, and there's other people that God is going to speak to at some point, point. I hope you listen to it. But if you turn it down, and we're going to talk more about this, you turn down that voice, you might not ever hear it again. You might not ever hear it again. Um, I, for some of you that have been around a church a while and online, uh, if you haven't heard this, this is great. Um, I absolutely adore my, tan my wife Tammy's laugh. It is the best laugh ever. It's one of the things that made me just uh, 
uh, adore her when we first started. I just love it. And it's, it's boisterous, it's loud, and if you've ever heard, there's times, right, a worship team will be in there praying, and Tammy's in here talking to one of you, and you're saying something, I, I assume it's funny, and she's laughing, and you could, and I, I just like, there she is. I think in prayer one time, right, John, I'm like, oh, there's my bride. Thank you, Jesus. I can hear her, and I love your laugh. And I can remember one time being at Disneyland, and um, if you've ever been there when it's super crowded, you lose track of your family, and it's never good to lose track of your kids, if you did not know that. <laughs> keep them within. Don't put them on a leash. That's weird. Just don't do that, but keep your hands on them, right? And so anyhow, I can remember um, looking around and not seeing Tammy, and I'm hearing all these people laughing and talking, and I'm not recognizing any of the voices, but then I hear my wife's laugh, and I can hear it in a distance. I go, there she is. How, how do I know that laugh so well? I know her. I know her. I have a relationship with her. And again, when you hear her laugh, we'll, you'll, we'll, we'll be out in Riverside somewhere eating dinner, and you'll think you're there alone. Then all of a sudden, you're going to hear um, Tammy's laugh and go, oh, the Evans are here, or just Tammy's here. And by the way, come by and say hi. Come by and say hi. But I adore it. I love it. And again, a stranger's voice people wouldn't recognize, but someone we know, and that's what God is trying to point out here. So look at, let's look at John 10, 6, as we go back through um, these scriptures. It says, Jesus used this figure of speech, right? He's trying to teach them something, but look what it says up on the screen online. You can track with us. It says this. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Why? Why? Because they are not his. Let me show you over here in John 10, 24 through 30. And again, um, I'm giving you a lot of scripture here. And I hope, by the way, you love God's word because I do. I really do. I really, man, I keep doing it. Is that an amen point? I don't know. Yeah, okay. Talk to me, church. Okay, here we go. John 10, 24 through 30 says this. It says the Jews, now there's a bunch of other people around that know about God, were there gathered around Jesus saying, how long will you keep us in, look at this word, suspense, suspense. They say, if you are the Messiah, hey, why don't you just tell us plainly? Would you just, can you just tell us? Just, just tell us. And so Jesus goes on and answers them, verse 25, and he says this. Oh, my gosh, this makes you laugh. I, the, man, Scripture makes me laugh sometimes. He says, he says, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The work I do in my Father's name testifies about me. But you, know, you do not believe. Here's the because. What does it say, church? Because you were what? Not my sheep. My sheep. Verse 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they, they follow me. He says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I'll stop there, and I'll, I'll come back to the verse 30 there. So they're setting up this scene, right? There's this tension that happened. Like, Could you just speak to us plainly? Could you just tell us? And he goes, I've been trying. I've been trying a long time to get your attention. I mean, God's allowing all these miracles. It's right in front of your face. You're not seeing it. Um, there's an iconic movie that just, I don't know, I just absolutely love. Um, and there's this, uh, did I just get super loud all of a sudden? That was weird. Or is it just me? Maybe my ears just opened up. Um, there's this iconic movie that came out years ago um, with Jack Nicholas and Tom Cruise called A Few Good Men. Is there anyone that's ever seen that? Has anyone ever seen that? It's, it's rated R, by the way. Church people should not be watching rated R movies, but I've seen it. So anyways, um, it's in a phenomenal movie, and it's a thriller. Well, there's this point in the movie where there is this general who's done something he shouldn't have done. He ordered this, what they call a code red, and that's when, um, I believe, a Marine doesn't do what they're supposed to do. They don't do this anymore, but they would go in and they would beat them up to kind of get them back into line. And so this, this uh, soldier ends up dying because these other soldiers attacked, but they were only doing what their uppity ups had told them to do. So he's... Uh, Tom Cruise is a, a lawyer um, within the military. He's trying to get this general to, to, to tell him what really happened, to be honest about it. And there's this amazing dialogue that happens. I mean, total suspense. And kind of like what we just saw here in Scripture, 
Um, so the scene from A Few Good Men says this. So um, Tom Cruise is badgering. I mean, he's going after Jack Nicholas. And by the way, Jack Nicholas, <laughs> is he not like one of the best actors like, of all time? The guy is phenomenal in his acting. Um, Tom Cruise as well. And so Tom Cruise's character is badgering uh, Jack Nicholas's uh, character. And as he's badgering him, he finally says, this general is sitting there and he's pompous. I mean, he's, he's a Marine down at Guantanamo Bay. And so he's hard, right, from serving. And he's like, you know, and so he, he looks at Tom Cruise's character. And some of you guys will remember the scene. He says, he goes, you want answers? I can't even do, ja- is that a good Jack Nicholas? I tried. I stood in front of the mirror for like a half an hour trying to get that down. <laughs> Embarrassing, I know. Why I share that, I don't know. You want answers? And then Tom Cruise looks back and he says, with passion, he says, I think I'm entitled to, and he doesn't say it, he doesn't even get to say it, because Jack Nicholas comes back over the top and goes, you want answers? And then this iconic line that Tom Cruise looks back, and some of you guys remember this, and you guys can say it with me, he looks back and he goes, I want the Okay, church, we got to practice this online. It was weak sauce. It was soft. That was nothing like the movie. If you go and see the movie inside the worship center, it was, it was soft. Up top, could you please help us out if you've seen the movie? So he says, you want answers? And he says, I think I'm entitled to it. He says, you want answers? And he says to, to him, okay, I'm going to have you. I'm going to coach you up. He says, okay, he's going to say, I, I want the truth. Okay? I want the truth. And then he says what? He says, you can't handle the truth. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to say it like Jack Nicholas said it. So, right? Okay? So Tom Cruise says, I want, the, I want the truth. And then basically how Jack Nicholas says it on three, two, one. You can't handle the truth. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. You want the truth? Do you really want the truth? And then he badgers him back. Do you understand how hard it is to be the general overseeing Guantanamo Bay? Do you understand the sacrifice that has to come? And I think at one point he looks at Tom Cruise and goes, have you ever served in the infantry? Have you ever shot a gun? Oh, no, you're a lawyer. You've been, you know, just taken care of along your way. So you don't even understand. And then he goes on and on. And, again, it's not want to spoil it for the younger generation that hasn't seen it. It's on Netflix. Go see it. Go see it. It is rated R, though, so shame on you. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> so this point is, he's pointing back out. These Jewish people are saying, why don't you just, just the suspense is killing us. Just tell us plainly. He goes, I did tell you. I gave you the truth, but you're not, you're not listening. You're not hearing. And the why is because they can't. They're not God's sheep. So I put down here, and this could be a good note. If you're a note taker, I know some of you are. You're just, you're just into taking notes. Here's a good note for you. You could write this down. All hear, but not all listen. All hear, but not all listen. Why? Because they're not gods. They're not gods. John 8, 4, 7 says this. I know this is a big setup, and we'll get to our feelings here in a second. John 8, 47 says... Whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you don't hear is that you do not belong to who? God. Well, pastor, you didn't, be- you didn't belong to God and God spoke to you because he will. I believe he will speak to everyone at some point, but there will be a time where he'll stop talking to you as a person who hasn't put their faith and trust in God yet. I believe that to be true, just like our friend who was out there serpent seeing the, the dolphins and the porpoises. So here's the thing as we think about this whole idea of where's the voice of God? Can I just tell you as pastor, I think life is so loud sometimes it drowns it out. It drowns it out. And so we need to talk about how do we start to hear God's voice more when we feel like we're not hearing from it. So here's your first fill-in this morning. So if you're filling in online, we'll have this for you as well. Fill-in number one says this. When you don't hear God's voice, get away and get quiet. When you don't hear God's voice, get away and get quiet. Can I just confess to you, this is so hard for me. This is so hard for me. I am just go, 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 go all the time. Um, I was going through In-N-Out Burger uh, to, to pick up a burger for a friend of mine I went to go see. And as I'm sitting in line, it was taking longer than it should. And I'm like, and I was thinking through, John, all the things I had to do. I'm like, I got to do this. I got to do this. And I couldn't just be calm. And at one point I go, 
I, I just, can I just praise God right now? I mean, I'm doing nothing. And I go, God, this would be a good time. So I just turned off the radio and I just, just sat in God. But this idea of just getting away and get quiet. And um, by the way, in a, uh, a month or so, I'm going to do a, a, another sermon series called Bells. And we're going to talk about this idea of finding a whispering spot, a spot where God, you can get away and be alone with God and start to hear from him. So you got the feeling there. So get away and get quiet. Um, let me show you there in your notes. This is 1 Kings 19, 11 through 12. And uh, the Lord is talking to Elijah. And watch what happens here. This is great. It says, the Lord said... To Elijah, he says, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now watch this. This is like high drama too. It says, then a great powerful wind tore the mountains apart. Look at this next line here. It tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks. Have you ever seen such a wind? Now some of you that have lived on the, 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 the East Coast, maybe you've seen like, like hurricane force winds. Um, I've never seen that. I mean, I've seen some harsh winds. Uh, and again, I don't know what it is about trailer parks and getting destroyed by tornadoes and getting hit really hard. But as a kid, part of my life, we lived in a trailer park. And uh, right across the way from our trailer was my stepmother's mom's trailer. And I remember it blowing so hard once that her whole roof just got ripped off, came over, cl like clipsed ours and like went into the next trailer next to us. Luckily, those people were okay, and Grandma, she didn't fly away. I was so thankful that she didn't get sucked away, but um, we went over and got her. We should have brought her in there with us. That was so bad of us. Like, she'll be fine, and then her roof gets ripped off, right? But here, the winds are going so powerfully that they're shattering rocks before the Lord. But look what it says here as it goes on in verse 11. It says, but the Lord was not in the wind. Then it says, after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. Like you'd think if God shows up and is going to speak, man, he would be coming with a force of a wind or a force of an earthquake. But it says the Lord was not in the earthquake. Look at verse 12. After the earthquake came a fire. Okay, for sure God's in the fire, right? He has to be burning bush, right? That's like a thing he does, right? It says, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came, it says this, a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. Now these other three things are signs of God's presence, and which we will see. But he's coming now with a gentle whisper. Now when someone comes to you with a gentle whisper, do you notice what you have to do? You have to start to lean in. You have to get a little, little closer to them to hear. Especially, I have small ears, so I have to get really close. But usually when someone's going to whisper to you, they're going to give you something. They're going to give you something really great. And see, what happens is, and why we got to find times, and I know for some of you moms, oh, God bless you. Some of you work and try to help run a home. And you're thinking, Pastor, when do I have time to get quiet before the Lord? Are you crazy? Obviously, you don't understand. I do. Sort of. <laughs> It's hard, but we've got to make time to set aside some time to get quiet with God and to hear from him. So we've got to find a way to do that. So when you don't hear God's voice, I want to encourage you to get away and get quiet. And again, we're going to unpack some more of that in the coming months, but it's so important. But as we're seeking God's voice, and maybe we're not hearing from God's uh, spirit, our second feeling this morning is this. The more that you listen to God's voice, the more you listen to God's voice, the more you will hear him. The more you listen, the more you will hear him. Um, I wrote this down. This is not in your notes. And again, I am so sorry. I apologize. I, man, after I did all this, I'm sitting there going, I wish I would have put it in so you had it. But, so you're going to have to take notes. So get out your phones. Get out your phones. You might want to write this down. You're getting out your phones, right? You got a pen? You're taking notes. Okay, here it is. If you are not willing... If you are not willing, write that down, if you're not willing to listen to everything God has to say, did you catch that? If you're not willing to listen to everything God has to say, you eventually, you eventually won't hear anything he has to say. Let me say that one more time in church. Would you just let that sink into your spirit real quick? 
Because when I wrote this, I mean, God, I, God gave this to me to give to you. And I'm sure I maybe heard it another time and God just reminded me to remind you of this. If you are not willing to listen to everything God has to say to you, you eventually won't hear anything he has to say to you. Isn't it interesting? And I'm like you. I love, love hearing from God the comforting and encouraging voice of God. Man, I love that. I love when he's like, Jason, I'm proud of you. Man, what, you know, how you're serving God's church, how you're loving on people and how you're doing things that, that, that are honor me. Even though you don't want to sometimes, you do. I'm so proud of you. And I don't know if God speaks to you in that way. But there's other times, like I shared with you, this week, this week, God had to rebuke me. That's a fancy Christian word for basically smacking me on the hand spiritually, reminding me of something that I had no place holding on to. So we want to hear from God when he's comforting us, but sometimes we don't want to hear from him when we're sinning and we're not following him or honoring him and doing what God and his scriptures say to do. It's not fun. And so there's times when we're living our lives and we're doing what we want to do, right? We'll turn the volume of God down. But man, if you say something nice, well, we want to turn that volume up. But God is saying, no, you can't have them both. Turning him down, turning him up, and get it. You got to turn them both up and be willing to listen to both. As I was praying over this that God gave me for all of us, um, he put on my heart 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Let me show it to you. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 it says this, Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Here's what this means. Um, this word quench, you could use that word, um, so when you're thirsty, I know Gatorade was, had a big old um, advertisement years ago that you said, you want to quench your thirst, you know, drink Gatorade. What it means is it's quenching, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, getting rid of that thirst. This word quench here could be the word translated, if you have a fire, and I know we have some uh, people who love to go camping, um, if you have a campfire, to quench it, you have to put on water, right? And you don't go leaving a campsite, especially if you're up in the high Sierras or anywhere else. You don't leave um, a, a campfire just running and go, oh, it'll eventually burn out. You've got to put water on it. You've got to quench it. You've got to make sure it's totally done. And before you leave, right, you've got to poke it. You've got to make sure there's no more smoke. There's no other. You've got to totally quench it. What the saying is, don't quench it. And there's times where I go, God, I like hearing the positive stuff, but the negatives, I don't like hearing that. You need to hear them both. And so what he's saying is don't quench it. Don't turn that down. When God's speaking to you, don't turn that down. So to listen more to God's voice, you need to hear him in both areas, right? Both sides. You need the stereo going, the good and the bad, the tough news and the good news. You need to take it both. And that comes through his Holy Spirit, which is just unbelievable and great. So he can lead and guide you, but there's times that we just, we turn him down, we turn it all the way down. Ephesians 4.30 says something about this as well, and we can kind of track there on our notes. It says this. Ephesians 4.30 says, and do not, it uses the word grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Um, I had this um, wonderful theologian teach me this thing in regards to grieving the Holy Spirit. It's very interesting that you can't grieve a thing. You can't grieve a thing. You can only grieve a person. And so you've got to understand this. That so when we're not walking to God and we're, 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 we're wanting all the good stuff, but we're not following when he's talking the bad stuff to us and we're struggling, maybe we're sitting in a particular area and we go, yeah, 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 God, I know, but I, just, I still want to do it. I'm not going to listen to that side of the voice for you telling me to stop doing that. That we grieve him. It hurts his heart. Why? Because he wants the best for you and for me. He wants the best for you in God's ways. By the way, can I just speak to the people up top? God wants the best for you. God's ways are the best ways. Online, God's ways are the best ways. And so we got to understand not to grieve him. And so I wrote a couple other notes down here. It says this. The more that you listen and act on what the Spirit is telling you to do, the easier it gets to listen to him. It gets easier and easier and easier. So maybe if you're a Christ follower right now, you are one of God's sheep. You're one of God's precious children, and you're not sensing it from him. Of course, we need to get away, need to get quiet. But maybe, just maybe, we need to start listening to all, being obedient, doing what God, like what you know what to do. 
Um, I know as a kid when I was growing up, and I don't know if any of you guys ever did this. Of course not. You guys are just wonderful saints who never sinned growing up, ever, 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 right? Your parents would tell you it's time for school, and you're like, I don't want to go to school. And they would say, no, you're going to school, and they would build this. And by the way, there are some of you that you're freaks of nature. Ever since you were a little kid, like, you loved school. And you're one of those kids who won the award for never missing a day of school ever. Have you ever met those people? Wait a minute. I'm afraid to ask. Is there anyone like that here? You never missed a day of school ever? Mama Viveros, you did something right besides being sick, right? So you were just there. You know, there were kids from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade there's like awards school districts give to those kids. They never missed a day. Martha, as a teacher, could you imagine never, ever, 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 ever missing a day of school? Goodness. But there's something to be said about just you don't feel right. Just go to school. How about work? Man, I don't know. Josh, you're getting back to, to school and getting back to work. Man, there are days I'm sure you're just like, man, I, not today. But you're a grown man. You're like, I, I've got to go to work. I've, I've got to do this. There's something about just doing it anyways. Um, or how about this, going to the gym. Uh, by the way, I'm so proud of myself. Last week, I signed up for the gym. I haven't gone yet. <laughs> I haven't gone yet. I went clap. I haven't gone yet. I mean, but it's a moral victory for me. And my daughter and my wife have gone, but I haven't gone yet. And we just moved to Riverside, so I'll get there at some point. So anyways, but I signed up, moral victory. But... There's going to be days where I don't feel like going, and I'm going to have to go anyways. Um, How about this one? The dentist. Oh, the dentist. Can I just tell you something about the dentist? If you're a dentist, God bless you. I love you. I hate going to your place. I hate it. Oh, I dislike it with a passion. Christians aren't supposed to hate. I dislike it with a passion. Last time I went, of course, they always ask you the questions, do you floss? Yeah, when I got meat stuck in my teeth, right? <laughs> like, that's when you're supposed to floss, right? And, you know, they're always just picking on you. It's never, I mean, very seldom do I ever hear the hygienist go, oh, my gosh, your teeth look amazing. And if I do have them one say it, I go, you're lying, right? You're lying. But they always are, like, tearing you down. And I can remember this last time I went, they go, oh, by the way, next time you come in, we should probably schedule a root canal for you. That's going to be fun. And by the way, the cheapest offer we have for you is $3,000. We take credit cards, right? But there's times, there's things we have to do. Um, I know some of us men are really stubborn this way. If, if we've got, you know, a, a, I'm going to pick on someone, a jacked up arm. We should go to the doctor and actually have them look at it and not be so pick-headed sometimes. And by the way, I'm speaking to the choir. But men are the worst, but... Sometimes we need, if we're not hearing God's voice, we need to just follow him anyways. And there's some people going, well, I'm not sensing God. Well, you still got to go to school. Well, I'm not feeling God. I still got to be a father or a mother. I'm not feeling right. I still going to go and do what I know I need to do. Is that making sense, church? It's good stuff. Now, I'm going to give you my, my life verse here. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and, and 6. Um, I love it. Someone else just said it, it was mine. Who is it? Is that Tori? Mine too. Okay, besties. <laughs> right? Love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In regards to this idea and understanding when you don't hear God's voice and to follow him, look at what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. And I'll, I'll, I'll just focus on 5 right now. It says this. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding we got to trust. Even though we don't hear him, we're not sensing him. we got to trust him. And when we're not sensing him, Guy and Lisa, we would lean into him and just trust that he has the best for us. That he has the best for us. And when we don't hear God's voice, we need to really lean into him because do you know that your thoughts and your feelings, I know mine, oh my goodness, they can lead you way astray. Way astray. So what we want to do is we want to lean not on our understanding. We want to lean into him even when we're not hearing him. Look at the, the Proverbs 3, 6 part of it. It says this. It says, in all your ways, submit. I know some people don't like that word, but it's so good, especially when we're having a hard time hearing God's voice. Submit to him, and he will what? He will make your path straight. He's going to guide and direct you. So sometimes when we're not hearing from him, we just got to lean in. We got to trust him. We got to follow him with everything that is inside of us to the best of our ability. So our fourth fill in there is this. 
when we don't hear God's voice, do the next right thing. Do the next right thing. By the way, I understand I'm going to speak to some of our friends and family maybe watching online. There's all kinds of different reasons why maybe you're not able to join us in the worship center. Uh, maybe you're bedridden. Um, maybe you're at the hospital. Uh, maybe you're out on vacation. Uh, Frank and Connie, hi. We miss you. Love you guys. Hope you're having a great vacation. There's different reasons why we're not here. But there's something to be said about coming into God's worship center and with other believers and worshiping him. And I know some of you drive from distances to come and be a part of God's body here at Church on the Hill. Um, But to understand we're not hearing God's voice, to just do the next right thing. Coming to church is a good thing. And if you're not sensing God in your heart and your life right now and you're a Christ follower, coming to church and being a part of the body of believers is great for us. So we need to make sure that we're doing those kind of things. All right, I got a few more fill-ins for you. Are we getting this? Are you enjoying this? Church, I'll, so you know, it, and again, ladies, I, I'm, I don't know what it's like to give labor. I've seen my wife give labor to two children. I've watched family members give labor. So when I say I labored over this, it was, this, man, this sermon, this message is hard to come out. Some are easy, this one was hard. But I'm gonna give you a couple more fill-ins. It says this. Number five, your fifth fill-in says, when you don't hear God's voice, he may speak through others. Um, I mentioned this last week, and teachers know this to be true, that the repetition is what the mother of learning. Like, you do it over and over again. So, again, as your pastor, if you hear me say the same thing over and over again, I'm trying to get you to get it. I want you to understand it, okay? There's something about others speaking into our lives. So when we don't hear God, we have to understand that God might put others in our place. Um, I want to show you something in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 30, 20, and 21 says this. It says, although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity, man, is, will this preach to some of us that are watching online, and the water of affliction, oh, God, yeah, give me that. It says this, and I say it says, your teachers, your teachers, the people around you, your pastor, other God-fearing people, your teachers will be hidden no more. Do you know when you're not hearing God's voice, it feels like, man, I'm just not sensing God, and you're going, I'm not hearing from God at all. It says here that they'll be hidden no more. It says this, with your own eyes you will see them. In verse 21, Casey says this, it says, whether you turn to your right or to your left, I need to unpack that another time. This is a very interesting verse. I don't have time to totally unpack it. It says this, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So sometimes when we're not hearing God's voice and we come into the worship center, we tune in online and we're sitting there and we're listening to God's word preached. Have you ever heard a sermon or you're maybe you're sitting here in our worship center and this has happened to me, I don't know how many times I've been sitting where you're sitting I'm hearing someone speak and I'm sitting there and then all of a sudden the person up there speaking is speaking, I feel like, to me. Has that ever happened to anyone? Anyone? Okay, a few of you. Have you ever had this? I know, sisters, you said that the first time you visited, you're like, both were like clamoring over each other going, you were speaking to me. And I'm like, and I, what did I say to you? I'm like, whoa, it wasn't me speaking. God was speaking to both, to both of you, right? And so I can remember one time uh, our pastor was preaching on something, and he started hammering away on something. And there's no way, Alice, there's no way he knew that that sermon and what he was saying was speaking directly to me. And there was part of me that was sitting there going, Someone told him. But I haven't even shared that with some of my closest of friends. Like, how did he know? So when we might not be sensing God's spirit talking to us, we can be at church or listening online, and all of a sudden there's going to be something I'm going to say, and you're going to assume that someone ratted you out. (laughs) Some of you men are going to come to me going, when did my wife talk to you? When did my wife talk to you? I'm like, Who's your wife, right? I don't, I don't, who are you? I don't know. Or vice versa, some of you ladies go, oh, okay, he must have said something. And why I do that voice when I, I use the lady thing, I'm sorry, ladies, that's just how I, I do. I, I, I don't know. Something I learned years ago that was kind of interesting to me, and I used to share this with Tammy all the time. Do you know that people don't think about you as much as you think they think about you? Right? 
And so we got to understand so we can be sitting there and we're not hearing from God and it's been a little dry, but we can come in and we can hear a sermon and all of a sudden I will say something. Sometimes it's not even in my notes. And God will say, I want you to say this and I'll say it. And one or if not two of you will come up afterwards going, that was for me. And if you ever do that and you say, Pastor, when you said, and if you ever see me take a step back, it, it doesn't mean that you have halitosis and your breath's really bad. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you need a Mentos. I don't know. But if I take a step back after you've said that, I'm acknowledging it. It was not me, okay? So it's me backing up, and then you'll see me real quick. And some of you guys have had interactions with me in, in my time being here that you've said this to me, and I've gone, and I just pull back and going, okay, so you know God spoke to you through me. Trust me, I'm not, okay, I, I know, church, I denigrate myself all the time because I want you to understand. When God speaks, he'll use an absolute idiot to speak to you. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm taking note on who's laughing. <laughs> yeah, Patty's waving at me. Patty Keeson's like, yeah, that's you, right? I love you. So we got to understand that God's going to bring someone and he's going to bring a word to you. So when you're not hearing from him, he may use a pastor. He may use another Bible teacher to speak to you. Look at our next fill in here. Number six. And we have two more to go. When you don't hear God's voice, search the Bible. Search the Bible. Search it. Read it. And if you're not hearing from God, and by the way, can I, I need to probably push pause, and this is in my notes. Maybe this is one of those moments for you or you online. When I first started going to church and put my faith and trust in God for the first time, I didn't know anything about God. I was sharing with a, a friend of mine who just put their faith and trust in God um, this week, um, and I'm so thankful I got to lead them to him to fully open his heart to, the, to him. And I was sharing that uh, when I first started going to church and I'd go to Sunday school, uh, they would start talking about all these different stories of the Bible that I just I didn't know. And I remember the Bible teacher talking about uh, Jonah and how he didn't honor God. And by the way, I'm going to do a little talk about Jonah uh, next week. But uh, how he, he didn't know, uh, I didn't know the story that God was speaking to Jonah. Jonah decides to run a different, a different direction. And I'm listening to this as a kid, and he says, yeah, they tossed him over the board of the ship, and then this huge fish or whale came up and, like, like, like ate him. Like, I was like, ate him? And just being the loud kid, Jessica, I know you know this to be true. I just say whatever. So I just blurt out in the Sunday school class when you're supposed to be sitting there and just listening. I just blurted out, like, I go, like, Pinocchio? <laughs> All the kids started laughing at me. I felt like this big. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know the story. And um, so afterwards, she got me this little kid's Bible with, like, lots of pictures, which I need. I still need. I love pictures. And, you know, the stories of this. But when I first came to know the Lord and this awesome African-American man that was in my church that taught our Sunday school class, he gave me his, I didn't own a Bible, he gave me his Bible, and it was a New King James Version Bible. And he said, start in the book of John. So I start reading the book of John. And, and if you've ever read the New King James Version, it's a little hard to, to understand. And I can remember someone saying that if, you don't, if you're reading God's word, if you don't understand it, you might not be a Christian. And so as a kid, I'm reading, I'm like, oh, I'm not understanding that these, thou's, those, and them's. I, I'm having a hard time. I want you to understand there's easier versions and if you're a Christ follower and you're not hearing from God to open up his word, he will speak to you. He will. Just read it slow. He will speak to you. Um, I love this verse in Hebrews 4.12. It's one of my, my favorite verses. And I know I say that all the time. I, I just love the Bible. Hebrews 4.12 says this about God's word. The Hebrew writer writes, For the word of God is alive and it's active. When you read God's word, isn't it interesting? You could read the same verse, right, Lucas? Like 10 years ago, and it ministered to you. 10 years later, you're different now. You can read that same verse, and it speaks to you in a different way. It's crazy. You know why? Because I said this last week. Truth never changes. And it speaks to you wherever you are at, whatever you're needing. And so as we look at this Hebrew verse, it says it's alive and it's, it's active. So when we're not hearing from God, 
like in a voice, speak into our heart. As we read his word, he will speak because it says here in this verse that it's alive and it's active. It says it's sharper than a double-edged sword. And by the way, we just got some new knives in our house. And goodness gracious, those things, you would think a samurai warrior like these things up. I mean, they just cut through. And you can ask my wife. She's almost lost a few fingers because, I mean, I mean, these things are sharp. God's word is sharper. It cuts right through. And watch this. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Now watch this next point. I underlined it just for me. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. I can remember one time I, w- I was walking with God, but I was kind of dry in my walk with him. And I wasn't sensing him guiding and leading me. And I'm trying to do the right thing. Just keep doing the right thing, right? Just do the next right thing. And just keep trying to follow him, right, Brian? That We just ca- keep following him. And I remember opening up the scripture once, and I read this, but I think I read it in the New Living Translation. And the end of this verse, it went, in, so in this NIV translation, it says, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. But when I was reading the New Living Translation, I think how it came across, it says, it shows you for who you really are. And when I read that, I realized, I have not been walking with God the way I wanted to. Remember when I said that if we want to hear God, we don't want to hear it all, right? And so I was tuning down the side of, I wasn't honoring God with this one particular area of my life, so I was tuning him down. And as I read his scripture, I wasn't hearing from him, but as I read his scripture, it told me, it will show you for who you really are. And then God's spirit went, has that ever happened to you? Two people on the right-hand side, amen, or your left. Gosh. Church, I want you to understand when I stand up here before you and I read this with such enthusiasm to know that this stuff will help us as we walk with God and we try to honor him with our life. So if you're not hearing God's voice, search the Bible. He'll talk to you through it. Here's our our last uh, uh, fill-in. When you don't hear God's voice, Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Again, this is talking about, you got to get quiet. And again, uh, in a, a, a month or so, I'll be talking about trying to find a, a, a whispering spot, a spot that you can get quiet and try to hear from God and commune with him and talk to him. But um, many of you know um, the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to read you Jeremiah 33, 3. This is the Lord speaking, and he says this. He says, call to me. Call to me. Paul Herman, you've been following God a long time. And you know what it's like when God speaks to you and when it feels like we can't hear him, right? But he says, call to me, and what does it say there? It says, I will answer you. Church, I'm asking you this. If you're not hearing God's voice in this season, whatever, online, if you're not hearing God in this season, maybe we need to sit back, get quiet, and then ask God, speak to me. God, I want to hear from you. As I shared with you earlier, and again, this is in my notes. Again, maybe this is God speaking to me. But God rebuking me this week, meaning correcting me, getting me back on the right track of me worrying, worrying, worrying about you, about you online, worrying about our church and the future of our church, for God to remind me this isn't my church. It was so good for me to, to listen. And so, you know, after God hits me with that, I finally go, okay, God, tell me more. Like, what do I need to do, Lord? Because I'm one of those guys that wants to, like, work, 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 work. I just want to do it all. I want to say yes to everything. And I know this to be true. And by the way, and I'm not setting up myself to just an easy out here, but there's going to be times I'm going to look you in your face, and I want to be there with you for everything you've got going on. But I've realized I'm one person. Uh, Heather, didn't I say this to you in the copy room today? I told Heather I was making a copy. I was printing off uh, my sermon, and she was getting ready for the new school year for our preschool. And I said, hey, Heather. I said, hey, I just read this article that somewhere over in, um, I think I made up a name. It was like New Zealand or Iceland or Sweden. It was probably Sweden because they're like this. I said, there's this, this new place in Sweden that you can go and they can clone you. So... She's like, well, sign me up. I go, yes and amen. Let's do Isaac, could you imagine if someone cloned, like you could send them to work 
And like you could go hang out like forever, right? And just have fun. And so me and Heather, that's what we're going to do. So if my clone gets up here and starts saying some gibberish and Heather's missing and, you know, and Tammy's acting weird and Matt's acting weird, it's because we got ourselves cloned. We left them here to deal with you. And we're off on a vacation. You're like, Pastor, where are you going with that? This idea of, it, we get so busy and we want to do it all. We want to say yes to everything, but to make sure that we, we, can't, we can't do it all. And so God, to remind me that, but for me to go, okay, God, then what am I supposed to do, Lord? And I feel like God just said this, and maybe he can say this to you right now. Just lo- love me. Love me. But asking God to speak to you and saying, God, okay, I don't hear from you right now. Would you, would you speak a new word into my life? Would you help me in this next dir- uh, direction? And there's going to be times where you're going to hear and there's other times you're not. But you need to keep asking and keep asking and keep asking. It might come through his word. It might come through the pastor. It might be coming, just coming to church and rubbing elbows with other people. But God will speak. I'm going to have our worship team come up and we're going to close out today's service A good friend of mine um, was here last week, and after church, uh, we ran into them, um, him and his wife and his kids, at a restaurant, and as I walked into the restaurant, he said, so you know, your your sermon was for me today. And again, uh, I don't know if he remembers what I did, I I took a step back, and what, what are you talking about? And God's leading him on a a new venture. God's leading him in a new direction. And I just want to let you know, God will. He'll direct you. He'll guide you. Just seek after him. And when you don't understand, you're not seeing it clearly, you're not hearing from him, to lean into him and to do the next right thing and trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Right? Don't lean on your understanding. Acknowledge the Lord. Okay, you're a Lord. I'm not hearing from you, but I'm going to do the next right thing. And guess what? He will direct you. He will speak to you. So to get quiet. So this week, would you just say, if you're feeling like, I'm not hearing from God recently, Pastor. I don't know what it is. That you would take this message and go through the points and seek God in his scripture and see, and maybe just maybe he's going to speak to you in another way. And there are weeks, man, I feel like God's talking to me constantly. And it's so wonderful. I, man, I, I almost feel like for video gamers, they call it a cheat code. Do you guys know what that is, a cheat code? You type that in, and, and your character, if, it's, a, if it's, a, it's an army person, you can never die. They could hit you a million times, and you just keep going. There's times I feel like I have a cheat code. But then there's other times where it's dry, and I feel like I can't do anything right, and I feel like, God, where are you? He's there. He's in the mix. And just know he's teaching you something in that season. Church, would you bow your head and pray with me as we seek after God as we close out this time of worship with him? Hmm. Hmm. God, I'm doing something now I don't do very easily. It's just be quiet for a second. And God, I know I can get so passionate about your word. I just, I'm a million miles a second, Lord. I'm just so excited and enthusiastic about your word because I've seen what it does in people's lives. I've seen how you transform marriages. I see how you transform um, alcoholics into to people who are God-honoring, loving people who arise, rise up and lead your church. God, I've seen transformation in so many people by putting their faith and trust in you. I get so enthusiastic about it, Lord. And, but, Lord, I also know that, that there, are, there are people here, God-honoring people. Maybe it's been weeks, months, or maybe even a year or longer that they really haven't sensed you leading them, speaking to them. God, I pray that they would have a breakthrough, that they would follow some of these steps and try to find time to be quiet and get into your scripture and and then ask you to speak to them. So God, would you now speak? As one song says, would you pour down like rain? God, would you 
Tell us what you need to tell us, that we would be fully devoted followers to you and we would rise up, Lord. But I know this to be true, Lord. There might be someone here this morning that is maybe even tuning online later in the week that doesn't know you yet. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you will speak to them and that, God, for the first time they will see that they're hearing an, a, a voice that they recognize, but they don't know how they recognize it, and that's you calling them to be a child of yours. With all of our heads bowed and eyes closed and online, you could join us well in prayer. If you don't know the Lord Jesus and you're sensing that he wants a relationship with you, Right now, would you just say, God, I, I don't understand all this. Can you just quietly, between you and God, just say, God, I don't understand all of this. I'm sensing you're speaking to me. So God, I, I know, I admit I'm a sinner. And God, I don't have it all figured out, but I want to offer my life to you. And God, I'm sensing there's going to be something new coming ahead. And I pray that you'd help me to lean into you and I'd learn more about this, this Christ that, that is calling me to be his child. God, help me to open up my life to you and follow you the rest of my life. And that, God, I could be called one of your children. And that you would speak to me and that you would guide and direct me. And that I could sing the praise songs like those people at Church on the Hill and the other great churches do. So God, I give you my life and I surrender it to you now. If you just said that prayer, there's a party in heaven going on for you right now. I'd like to pray a blessing over you and the rest of us that are also God's children. God, I pray for those that might have put their faith and trust you in the first time. God, I'm sensing there might be a couple people here maybe have gotten off track a little bit and they need to rededicate their life to you, which I do almost every day. Is get, surrender my life back to you, back to you, back to you and ask for you to guide and direct me, God. I pray that you would help those that need to get back on track to do that as well. And then, God, for those of us that are on track but maybe haven't been hearing from you, God, that you'd speak to us in a mighty, mighty way and we'd follow your direction. And understand what a blessing it is to walk and talk with you. Lord, we love you. We surrender our lives to you. And we ask a special blessing again over those that have put their faith and trust in you for the first time. The enemy's not happy. But as we read that scripture, once you are the Lord's, no one can snatch you out of his hand. So God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us through your spirit. God, thank you for allowing us to worship you in song. So God, as we get prepared to close out this part of our worship to you, Lord, and we sing songs to you, we ask that you would bless it and that it would be a blessing back to you. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray this. Amen. Church, would you rise and stand as we close out in song to God? Greater
What a wonderful name it is. No, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Let's close out in prayer. Online, would you join us? God, would you speak to us? God, as we get into your word, would you show us the areas of our life that are on track with you? Would, uh, would you help us to lean into that and learn more about that, Lord? And we'd listen to you in that. That, God, that you would help us to open up all channels of listening to you and hear from you, that, God, you would guide and direct, Lord, because this life is hard enough on its own, but, Lord, without you, it's even harder. So, God, would you help us to, to be listening, God? You know, is there a neighbor down the street that, that maybe we're sensing that we're supposed to go check in on them, Lord? I, I heard this horrible story, Lord, and I know that you saw as I read it and how my heart just broke. That there was a, a man in the city and he hadn't been seen for months and months and months. And the, the neighbors, Lord, you saw the story. He, no one went to go check in on him. And as the months turned into a year, and then a year turned into two, and then to three, Lord, and weeds would grow up in his, in his lawn, and neighbors would come over and mow it, but they would knock on the door from time to time, but we thought, well, he just likes being to himself. And God, for 
a company to buy this house that got foreclosed and for them to go in to find this elderly man sitting in his seat mummified. He'd been dead for over three years and no one checked in on him. God, I pray that church on the hill and the people that would call this church their home that God, that we get promptings from you to go check in on that person. And God, I know what happens for Tammy and I. Sometimes we go, man, is that of us or is that of you, Lord? Because I don't want to go bothering anybody. But God, there are times that you speak to your people about checking in on the elderly or checking in on the young family or asking a person who's making our coffee, how are you doing? No, how are you really doing that, Lord, that you would speak to us and that we could speak to others and love and do what you call us to do? So, God, will you help us as we leave this worship center? Would you help us as we turn off this broadcast that you would help us, God, to hear from you and do what you tell us to do in loving people? And we do that more and more and more. God, you still speak. You still speak to your people. And we hear you because we are yours. We are your children. So God, now empower us to do that as we go. Thank you for the Sunday and the blessing it has been. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus as we just sang. Amen. Church, have a fantastic week and go out there and be his hands and his feet. God bless you.